Okay, here we have a, a relatively simple question asking how many oxygen atoms are used up in the aerobic oxidation of one molecule of pyruvate? Well, here I've drawn for us a pyruvate molecule. And what we want to figure out then is how many oxygen atoms are being used up. So X, when we convert uh, pyruvate into carbon dioxide and, and water. And there's several ways to do this. I'll get to the, 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 what that uh, questioner has asked me here to use the Krebs cycle and electron transport chain in a second. But this is a really simple way to do it that just balances out the, the number of atoms um, in the oxidation process. So if we look at our pyruvate, we've got three carbon atoms. So that means for this pur our purposes here, Y must equal three. We're going to make three molecules of CO2. Um, how much water are we going to make? Well, we've got four hydrogen atoms. So that means we're going to make two molecules of water. So then if we add up how much oxygen is on this side when y equals 3 and z equals, is equal to 2, we find that we're going to have 6 oxygens here and 2 more here. So that will be 8 in total. So 8 oxygen atoms here. We've got 3 oxygen atoms on this side. So that means we need 5 more oxygen. So x would then be equal to 2.5. So we already answered the question 5 by just balancing it out like that. There's a, Another very simple way to do it, which involves redrawing the molecule of pyruvate as a Lewis dot structure. That is drawing in all the electron pairs that are involved in the bonding between either carbon-carbon or um, carbon and hydrogen. We're gonna ignore the electrons that are involved in the bonding to oxygen because those electrons have already been transferred to oxygen. So those are not important. So there we go, we drew up the Lewis dot structure of pyruvate, um, showing only those electrons or highlighting only those electron pairs that are involved in carbon-carbon bonds or carbon-hydrogen bonds. And if we count up those pairs, one, two, three, four, five, we find that we've got five pairs of electrons that can be transferred to an oxygen atom, five oxygens. There's another great way to do that. You can use that with any molecule with um, a fatty acid or a glucose, whatever you want. That's a very simple way to make this type, type of calculation. And of course, if you so want, you can memorize the Krebs cycle and, and find out how much NADH is produced in oxidizing our pyruvate. So here's our pyruvate. When we convert it into acetylcholine, there's our first one. As we go through and there's the citric acid cycle, here's number two. And number three, we're going to make one molecule of FADH4, and then in our final Krebs cycle reaction, malate oxalacetate will generate our fifth molecule of NADH. We're going to feed this NADH, four NADHs and one FADH. We're going to feed those into uh, the electron transport chain, and the pair of electrons that's carried either by NADH or FADH will be transferred down this electron transport chain. Here's our final two electrons to one atom of oxygen, half O2 shown here. So then if we've got four and of NADH and one FADH, that means at the end, we will be using five uh, half O2s or five oxygen atoms uh, up in the complete oxidation of pyruvate. So that shows you three different ways to solve this equation. Um, I like the Lewis dot structure way. That's my favorite way. You can't go wrong with that. Um, balancing out the equations is also great. Obviously, memorizing your biochemical pathways if you want to do that, go for it. Enjoy.